Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Gerard Show. I'm your host, Gerard. We have a very fabulous uh, Power Pack show this evening. Now in 2020, we have reached a breaking point with the murders of George Floyd, um, for the murders of Aubrey, also the one of Breonna Taylor, the ones that we don't know about. We are talking about that today. And we have uh, four individuals on the uh, call today. I'm very excited to have them on. First of all, we have um, an entrepreneur, a filmmaker, and a really good friend of mine um, who stopped by the show, Mr. Cortez Mack from Chicago. He stopped by. How are you, Mr. Mack? I'm doing good. How you doing, my brother and people? Very good to see you. The world is yours. I can see in the background. Stay in the space, baby. We are with him. He's doing some very big things in the film industry, something we will talk about. Mr. Mark A. Yoakum is on the show. Welcome. How are you, sir? Thank you for having me. I'm doing good. He's look, looking very cozy in his love seat there. Now, also, we have a, another gentleman who's a really good friend. He is a preacher as well. Um, he also is a, um, has a non-for-profit called TPP, where he gives back to the community as well. Uh, Mr. Tajagina Jones, how are you this evening, sir? I'm good. How are you doing, doctor? And gentlemen, how are you all doing today? Good, yeah, good. Yeah. And then we also have a lovely young lady. This young lady is a photographer. She is also an entrepreneur and a businesswoman as well. And she stopped by on the Sherrod Show to give her opinion, as well as to be able to elaborate on her experiences as being a black woman in America as well. So we want to welcome the lovely Victoria Davison. How are you, young lady? Good, how are you? Great to have you. We really appreciate you stopping by on the Sherrod Show. So we're going to jump right into it. Now the Sherrod Show is sponsored by Harold's Chicken, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrod Show. I'm your host, Sherrod, live on location here at the beautiful Harold's Chicken on 6523 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood. Some of the greatest chicken you could ever have in your life, and they have a new location that is just open here in Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, on 6523 Hollywood Boulevard. And ladies and gentlemen, they got it right. I don't know why Mark is smiling so much. I kind of We kind of talk about that a little bit later, but he's really busting up and smiling about it. Is a big thing with their key sponsor for the Shemart Show. Okay, now we're going to jump right in it today as living in America. Now, um, I'm going to throw this first to you, Mr. Jones. When we saw um, the thing fire in the news today, we've seen the George Floyd, Armand Aubrey, Breonna Taylor. Um, we've seen so many murders and, and brutalization of African Americans in the news today. What is your initial response and reaction? Do you feel that racism is alive and well, um, Taj, or do you believe that the media is blowing it up more out of proportion? Well, I mean, racism has always been in existence, um, but what's been hidden is now being brought to light, and I think um, everyone is seeing it now. Um, you know, with the plague and stuff that's going on, everything is coming out front. Um, what, what's been hidden is coming into light for everyone to see and to take notice of it. And they're trying to figure it out, but um, God is allowing it to happen because um, it, it, it's, it, it, he's punishing the, the world, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately enough that um, people's got to get it right. I, I, I had brought my Bible right here because this is the source right here. The president... Donald Trump had held it up. He was sending a message to us to get into God's word because we get into God's word, it would help us individually and as a um, race of people as well. Now, and, and your overall feel that do you feel, Taj, that nothing really surprises you now, or do you feel that you've gotten worse over the years? Nothing, nothing surprises me now. Um, it's just because it's the sins of the world. That's what's happening. Um, that's why when, when God said, if my people were called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I would hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. There's a lot of sin and there's a lot of wickedness that's going on. It's been going on. And we are God's chosen people, but because of our disobedience and not being able to to, to work together and, 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 and communicate together. I mean, it's a lot of evilness going on that if we could just get back to God and let him lead and guide us, 
a lot of this stuff would be taken care of. And, and the thing, Mr. Sherrod and gentlemen, it would be free of charge. That's what the amazing thing is, that we can just really trust God wholeheartedly. Okay. All right. Now, um, so, Mark, I'll, I'll throw it to you. So Taj is implying, um, basically, if I understand him correctly, that it's the sins of men that's starting to contribute or has contributed to so many of these brutalities and things that are going on. And Todd surmises that if we are to just humble ourselves and go back to the Lord, um, things will be much better. Now, do you agree with that concept? To a, to a certain point. Um, we, yes, I mean, <clears throat> if everyone did that, of course, things would be much better. But let's be realistic at the same time. There was a Bible that was shoved to us during slavery, during the slave times, since our existence in 1619. And the people that shoved that Bible to us wasn't Christians, you know. But <coughs> we have to do, um, everybody has has a part to play and and, um, and, and correcting the situation because it's, it's, I mean, it's been out of hand for a long time. And the only difference I see now is that things are being recorded. You're having, and, and and that's why, I mean, just like with George Floyd, if that situation wasn't recorded, it would have been swept under the rug. Same thing with a lot of other cases. So, I mean, yeah, you know, um, spirituality plays a big part in it, but there's still more we can do as well as, as that. That's not to tell all. Okay, and I'm going to throw it to you, Victoria. What are your thoughts on the matter? Do you feel that if we walk right and um, humble ourselves before the Lord, that will put us in a scenario where it'll be less police brutalities and also, you know, heal the land? I think that it's it's a really unique circumstance that African-Americans consider this a spiritual issue. So I think when we view things happening to us, we 100% think about God's involvement in it. And I think that that's a special condition we have because we've had so much oppression that we haven't been able to insulate ourselves in any sort of way to kind of deny the entire existence of God. So do I think it's a spiritual issue? I do think it's a spiritual issue. And I do think that the time we're in now with as much recording that we can do is why we're able to hold people accountable. So everyone has to look at the qualities that make them up and have to think about where they came from. So in all of this, the fact that we can have a real discourse because of accountability, to me, is one of the biggest markers that there is something going on and it is the time to push for change. Now, what about you, uh, Cortez? I'm saving the best for last. What do you feel? What are your What's your opinion? Um, I just think we got to learn how to rightly divide this stuff. You know, uh, I mean, of God, I find, correct? can you hear me? Yeah, you're speaking of the word of God, correct? Uh, I find it quite interesting that uh, in this time, the only people are talking about the Bible are black people. Um, you don't see the evangelicals talking about coming together. You don't see the no other cultures coming together with black people, yet we're at the bottom of the toe pole getting beat, shot, and all this stuff. I believe it's a spiritual war, but I believe God gave us common sense, too. I, I just don't believe that we need to be, uh, the Bible tells us we need to be prayerful and watchful. And I think we've been so focused on being prayerful and want to be blind. Because mind you, uh, remember the white boy came into the church and shot up nine black people while they were in Bible class. So we just can't be so so holy minded where we're uh, spiritually minded, I mean, uh, heavenly minded where, where we know we live. And I think we're pushing a lot of black people to be so spiritual that we're missing the point that this whole racism thing, it is a spiritual battle, but we got to use common sense because we can go back to Martin Luther King, they prayed. All them folks back in the 60s prayed. All our gospel songs came from slavery. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed. But yet, 
What's the end result? It's not the fact that we don't believe. It's the fact that we have to have common sense like everybody else. We cannot shoot people. We cannot shoot people with scriptures and they're shooting us with bullets. Okay, okay. Now, um, before we get to the question, Todd, um, somebody sounds like they're, they're, um, their house is right by the airport. So I'm hearing a lot of background noise. So, uh, if you can, whoever that is, mute your phone or mute your line until we discuss and we talk. So I won't drown it out for that. All right, so Todd, you had to hand it. What? Well, I want to make to um, Mr. Cortez Mack uh, get there. And I know Mr. Mack is a a um, very profound doctor probably in the scripture, but uh, it, it's deeper than what I'm saying with this because I'm not talking about, that's why it says, if my people, because I'm not talking about, because even if you look through Martin Luther King, because it was revealed to me, I was looking at it, it was a lot of marching going on. You got a lot of marching, a lot of protesting. But the, in, in this book right here, the basic information before leaving earth, it says what? Pray until the end. Um, pray for one another. It says, pray for one another. Pray until the answer comes. It didn't say march. It didn't say protest. I'm not against it. I'm just saying what does say the word. And then it says, pray until the answer comes. Pray ye for one another. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes people. And prayer changes situations. Because remember, we all got to die, right? We all going, well, I'm not saying all, because uh, there's going to be some people that's going to be caught up. Hopefully I'm one that's caught up, so I don't see that. But that's another issue. But the thing is, is now how you die is only, you know, it, it, it's different things. You have to leave somewhere. In cases that we've seen, that's how they had to die or had to leave. But the key is, is like I had saw the, the conference that um, George Floyd's brother had said, he said, hey, we got to switch this up. Or And he also said, you have to educate yourself. That's why I said before is it comes back to the Bible because the Bible says study to show thyself approved. Because first of all, if you got the Bible in you, yeah, things happen, but you're probably not going to commit as much crimes as that's happened. And remember, we reap what you sow. Regardless of how things are, if you look at the historical fact that sometimes some of the people that had, they had some done some things that you know you you know you do something bad to somebody it's gonna come back that's why it's good to put out good that's why I try to make sure I do good say good all the time because I want that energy to come back to me if I do something bad to somebody I have to expect some bad's gonna happen to me now preacher there's there's a comment coming in right now can you hear me yeah okay there's a comment coming in that says it's easy for you to say this if it's not your family member if it's one of your family members, you would be singing a different tune. What do you say to that? Well, oh, well, there's a difference now. Let's 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 now we we, we, we <laughs> it all depends. If you have a family member that's on drugs, you have a family member that's in a gang, a family member that does wrong on a daily basis, that's something that you have to deal with. But the thing that goes is in there, we get on TV, they get on TV and say one thing. But they don't say the truth about the whole situation. And, like one time I seen uh, one thing that I had respect. One time I seen it was something that was where they publicized it, and the and the mom was realistic, and I had to respect her for that. She it was a key. Uh, uh, I think a young boy that had got shot or something like that so many times. But she admitted she said he was a bad kid. He was in trouble. That, that was the first time I saw a parent admit what was going on, and she said he got what he deserved. Okay, now let me, ask you, that. let me ask you a question now, uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Yoakum. Um, yeah. Now, say for example, God forbid, what happened to George Floyd happened to you, Ahmaud Arbery, et cetera, and you live to tell about it, but you face someone with an opinion that Taj has about it. Would you well, be offended? Yes, yes, I would. Here's the thing. Um, just because you, you have a criminal history of you've done something been bad or wrong, it still doesn't justify a police officer gunning you down if you're unarmed. It doesn't justify a police officer putting you in a chokehold and killing you, uh, uh, having his knee on your neck for eight and a half minutes and you're unarmed, regardless. You know, so yes, yes, um, I would be offended by that. 
Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, and, and, and most of these cases that we look at, whether it's uh, Philando Castile, Eric Garner, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, whoever, you know, the uh, Laquan McDonald, they're they're unarmed, and they're either getting choked to death or they're getting gunned down. And regardless of what type of criminal history you have, once again, it still doesn't justify a police officer gunning down or killing an unarmed black male, period. Mm-hmm.